pre-recorded from Joe's mom's basement. Welcome to a Wednesday Rewind episode of the Stacking Benjamin Show. Hey everyone, I'm Griffin the Intern, or as the academic advisors at school like to call me, the Fintern. Part of me wishes this were a video podcast so that you could see what a mess this place is after eight weeks of shows. As I was walking in, Joe handed me a mop and an old Betamax tape. Betamax? I, I don't even know what that is. But it turns out there's a player right here, under a stack of Joe's mom's quilting magazines, and the tape includes an episode called Check Your Financial Diagnostic with Gene Chatsky. Joe talked to Gene about why people should get a financial checkup. It was a good idea back when we talked to Gene in 2017, and I think it's a good idea now. And of course, this is a fully loaded Stacking Benjamins episode, so you can expect a Haven Lifeline call, Doug's trivia, and headlines. But remember, this episode originally came out in April 2017, so don't enter any mentioned giveaways or take investment advice from this episode. You have fun listening to this. I'm going to go see what's growling over there in the corner. Fin turn out. <laughs> Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. You're listening to the Stacking Benjamin Show. Hey there, sports fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and welcome to the first day of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And to help you afford that next trip to your arena for a fight, I mean, hockey game, we have a fantastic show chock full of money-saving advice. (laughs) I'm just kidding. We got more of the same old worthless stuff as usual. On today's show, from the Her Money Podcast, Please welcome today's show money editor, Gene Chatsky. Of course, we'll also throw in headlines ripped from the pages of the nation's finest news sources, serve up some ice-cold trivia, answer your letters, and respond to Kyle's Haven Lifeline question about funding a Roth IRA. And now, two guys who mom just let out of the penalty box, Joe and O-J-J-J-J-G. You started it. <laughs> I started it. I don't. I was like at a hockey those. game a couple weeks ago, and uh, you know they got a camera in the hockey in the penalty box. Yes. The guy that went in the penalty box put his stick right on top of the camera, and the whole stadium boo. <laughs> you know. That is perfect. So yeah. I funny. love it. I love going to see hockey games live. Watch them on hockey TV in person is a thousand times better than on the television, uh, but still not my favorite. But uh, but this was a good stadium that I was at, so. It was fun. Really enjoyed. I tried to go to one game a year. Hey, everybody. I'm Joe Salci. Hi, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And across this card table from me in my mom's basement is the man who's ready to do it again for another hour, Mr. OG. I was trying to figure out how you're going to play some hockey reference there. Here's OG who always shoots it from the blue line. I don't know. That doesn't make and any sense. And misses. <laughs> <laughs> he well, tries hard. Fair. Oh, Hey, guess what? I'm not what? really good at segues. You Gene, are. Gene, Gene Chatsky That's is nice. here today. Today's show yeah. money editor, Gene. We love Gene. Gene is amazing. The property values always go up when Gene's here, so we're very excited that yes, Gene's indeed. coming down to the basement. But you know what else we're excited about? We're excited that people have been going to stackybenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. Because when you head to magnify money, you know what happens? You have lower bills on your credit cards and on your debt strategy. You know why? Because you're paying less in interest with a credit card. You should be paying them off in full. But that's a whole different story because at Magnify Money, if you are paying them off in full, guess what you can do? You can shop for the cards that have the highest rewards, which is fun. In fact, Nick over at Magnify Money says you're leaving money on the table if you have less than 2% on your reward card. StackyBenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money. Also, savings accounts, checking accounts, car loans, Uh, going into mortgages, and one of the best financial blogs you'll ever find with Mandy Woodruff over there, formerly of Yahoo Finance, who's taken over that blog and whipped it into shape, OG. She's whipped it into shape. So average person saves 450 bucks when they visit Magnify Money. And the place Magnify Money calls numero uno, that's number one, by the way. For those of us who don't speak a Spanish, 
when it comes to student loan refinancing and personal loans, head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash SoFi. That's spelled S-O-F-I. They'll throw in a hundred bucks if you refinance your student loans or take out a personal loan using our link, stackybenjamins.com forward slash SoFi. You'll find they've got tons of options to work with you, like flexible loan terms, extremely competitive interest rates, and better yet, they work with members, not just customers and people who do business with SoFi. No, they're a different kind of company. They'll help you find a new job, invite you to networking events, roll out a range of services you're not going to find at that local bad bank of yours. So whether you're hoping to buy a house, refinance your existing one, consolidate the student loans, or get your personal debt under control, stackybenjamins.com forward slash SoFi. Gene Chatsky coming down to the basement. The Haven Lifeline. We're going to take a letter, but first we have some amazing headlines, so let's get this party started. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins Headlines. First headline today comes to us from Investment News. Fields getting crowded. Fields getting more crowded. Listen to this. Wells Fargo Advisors Intuitive Investor Robo Advisor Technology. Yeah, I saw this. They file their ADV registration, which means it's coming. Wells Fargo's going to have theirs. The service, which will be launched as a pilot program for customers in June, is going to require a minimum investment of ten thousand dollars, and it'll charge fifty basis points. And for those of you, yeah, that, good luck competing. For those of you that don't speak uh, inner circle finance. I remember the first time somebody talked to me about basis points. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Ba- 50 basis points, half a percent. Half a charge. percent, correct. Half a percent. That, my friend, is high. For this type of service, two high things. $10,000 minimum, I think. Uh, Wealthfront uh, starts you off with, what, 500 these days? $500. And 50 basis points, half a percent fee. Yeah, that's not going to get any traction. That sounds like a program that they're launching for the news headline, but not actually trying to do to make money on. Yeah, just kind of saying they have it because they do. Yeah. Oh, no, we do robos. We have that here. The service known as Intuitive Investor will target younger clients who don't have an investment relationship with Wells Fargo Advisors. Younger younger clients. Who also must not know how to use Google and can't (laughs) type robo advisor into a search browser and find- Find that they're all the same, cut from the same cloth. They're just, uh, you know, if you're trying to find the cheapest thing, you know, this is a commodity. Robo-advising is a commodity, is it not? It's, so why would you, you know? It's, it's so funny. Do they make any case for it further in the article? It says, like, e- this is awesome because of, e- this is why it costs three times as more than. Management in the portfolios will be done by SigFig. That's pretty good. An independent San Francisco-based wealth management technology company whose algorithms will rebalance the portfolios and harvest tax losses when appropriate, Wells Fargo said. So basically like every other one. Like every other and one. And every other advisor in the world so far. Yeah. ETFs offered in the Robo's portfolios will be a mix of passive broad-based index and smart beta strategies select, Ooh, smart beta. selected by the Wells Fargo Investment Institute, which also designed the asset allocation models. I wonder if uh, some of those are going to be Wells Fargo little products. Home you think a little home cooking going on? <laughs> I would put it past them. I mean, already, like like you said, people don't know how to use Google or Bing or whatever. Like, we're not looking for young. We're looking for the S word. Suckers. Here, here, you know, what's also great is that according to the new CEO, everyone in America already has an account. Perfect. Everybody's made their quarterly bonuses. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Is it too soon for that? Too soon. Thank you, Mr. OG, for investing in our new uh, intuitive investor platform. Like, I've never done that. I, I, well, you have now. <laughs> Congratulations. For what? Oh, you're our top Why person. is my checking account overdrawn? <laughs> I thought I had like six, $7,000 in the account. Well, you did. But uh, we uh, we updated your account to include our intuitive investor program. Which you're going to love. It's going to well, be fantastic. Could I give you some of this uh, delicious smart beta? It's such a buzzword. Our uh, second headline. Comes so I guess you know where we fall on that story. Y- yeah, maybe it's probably, we've probably beaten that horse a little bit lately. Second headline comes to us from the Huffington Post, actually comes to us from my evil arch enemy, Meg. Meg knows who she is. Meg is Your my nemesis. She, she is my nemesis. You know why? I did this thing on Twitter. I said, if somebody had you a million dollars right now, what would you do? Just to, just to see. And it blew up. And a bunch of people, a bunch of people had hilarious things. I would say half the people turned it political, number one, which I didn't, you know, I didn't respond to those. Other people had heartwarming stuff, pay off the student loans, 
give it to charity. Like, that was nice. Meg said, because it's probably $20 bills, I would, I would, I would have to count it out. At, I'd spend all day at the bank with the bank rep counting it out. And I just retweeted it and said, this is the person I always get stuck behind at the bank. And then Meg said, oh, it's Joe? If it's Joe, I also want to know everything about every different checking account product they have. And I probably should take a tour of the facility. And I don't know. She said like three or four things. So Meg is my evil arch nemesis now. So this piece she sent me, though, via Twitter. It's from the Huffington Post, and it's by Shakir Hassan, who's a contributor to Huffington Post. But not only that, he also, OG, is an entrepreneur, a blogger, and an internet marketer. And I don't know Mr. Hassan. I don't know him at all. However, the headline of this article, How to Build Passive Income Just by Selling an Annuity. It's that easy. You just sell an annuity and you build some passive income. Well, I think the real thing is you need to sell about... What do you think is reasonable income? You need to sell like what about a a hundred of them? If you can get a solid ten million in sales, I mean that's that's a pretty good income. I mean you might make about six seven hundred thousand that year. That's, um, a, that's a good start, but you can't. I remember it. when I don't know where the story is going here, but I remember when I was an advisor at my old company before my company before the company before the company, like the first company. My wife and I were considering moving. It took us a long time to actually move, but this was long before we had kids and everything. And I was talking to another advisor down in Florida where I was trying to think about moving to. And he was trying to leave the business, sell his business. And he had $50 million in assets under management, which is no small sum. That's That's nice, nice practice. Just a lot of money. 100% in annuities. And I said, well, that's an interesting business model. And he said, well, yeah, every year for the last 10 years, I acquired $5 million of new money in annuities. At a 6% commission, I made $300,000 every year. Plus, there's a little trail, a little back-end commission on each one of those things as the years go on. He said, by the end of year 10, the surrender charges on year one's annuities went away so I could resell them the new thing and get another 300,000. He said, so it only took me 10 years of 5 million each year. And now I make 300 plus thousand dollars every year. And I don't, Yeah, it's an easy business. I'm like, well, this, there you go. This author here has got it. Listen, he says, how much money do you make each year? It's a commonly asked question. Many people depend on the regular, 12, <laughs> many people depend on their regular salary and investment to generate the monthly income, but a good way to increase your income is by passive income. I don't know if you know Obviously, that. yes, passive. Yes. That means you don't have to do any work for it. I prefer passive to active. If I can sit on my butt more and have the $100 I like you having passive in. dinners. Passive income is the income which doesn't require your time, energy, or skills. It I can don't. be an investment which you've done and not worked for. Any sales which offer you trail commission or any book which provides you royalty or some other sales. How can passive income be generated? He says there's multiple ways. Renting properties to other people. You can sell your creative work, such as books, videos, and pictures. That's easy, too. Blogging could do the same for you. You and I tried that. We made a ton. Yeah, we made a lot of passive income doing that. that. At least a dollar. Sales income can be a good way to generate passive income. This can be made by selling any insurance policy, financial products, credit cards, or contract services. You don't need, I mean, who needs expertise to do that? You just find a person. You can do advertisements. As long as the ad's posted on your vehicle, you can put slap an ad on your vehicle and get some income. And he says, or by selling an annuity. Let's take a look at the passive income generated by selling an annuity. He says there's lots of financial products which can be sold, and the annuity's one of them. The person who sells the annuity not only receives commission to selling it, but also gets a trailer. An annuity is a simple thing. Financial- not a trailer like a, like a vehicle. Meaning, it's not like an extra meaning an something. ongoing commission later. Yeah, you get a back end commission. It keeps on coming. This the gift is, that keeps on giving to the advisor. So far, so far it's a little bit rubbishy, but it's but it okay. I get it. This is where the train goes off the tracks. Okay. An annuity is a simple financial product. Simple. Okay. That's why their the contracts are what about uh, one hundred and fifty pages long. Pages long, full of yeah, yeah. Uh, for those who have an amount of money to invest and they don't want to work against it, the annuity can be bought and the amount of money is spent in the investment company and you get a consistent payout from the investments you made. That's, that's how easy you, you put the money in it 
and you get a consistent payout. For, for example, somebody invests an amount of $700,000 in an annuity. Oh, okay. Nice round number. Yeah, do that math. Let's say 700000 Has a return of 6% annual. I love mm -hmm. those. They can get their returns in monthly, quarterly, or yearly basis. They don't need to do anything except to get that fixed amount in exchange each and every month. Many retired people invest in these annuities to get the amount of money they need on a monthly basis. 6% annual return on a $700,000 annuity. By the yeah, way, you, sh you show me a nice 6% fixed annuity and I will buy it myself. Here's the thing. It can be done. It yeah. can oh. be done in year one. Because what will happen is an annuity company will lure you. You and I both seen this, dude. They'll lure you in. They'll say, guess what? It's 7%. Oh, uh, that's amazing. An annuity person doesn't even tell them that at the end of year one, that, that rate of return goes away and now it's based on the market, right? And once they have you with a 10-year surrender period where you can't get the hell out of it and they decide to, to put you against, you know, whatever the, the market basis is that they've created, next thing you know, you're at 1.2. Yeah. And yep. you're stuck there for the other nine years. Nine plus. Yes. Yeah. If it's only 10. I've seen them that have 15-year surrender schedules, 20-year even. There's 20-year surrender schedule annuities. Can you imagine that? 20 years? Well, you and I have seen Lifetime. We know a certain company in Cincinnati that used to have a Lifetime one. Remember that? <laughs> I don't, but that sounds, sounds awesome. Where no matter, For them. no matter when it was, you were going to take it to get out. It was going to hurt. What does a person get in return for selling an annuity? There's lots of reasons to sell annuity. It could be quite helpful and easy for the people to get a return of selling the equity. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that just sounds like not. This sounds is, like a whole bunch of mashed up words put together. This is quality Huffington Post material. Number one, the broker. If you're the broker, then there are lots of benefits, which you can get after selling annuity. Such you get the commission for selling it. Another major benefit, you'll get a trailer commission that's paid over time. Number two, the owner of the annuity. Since the annuity, listen to this scheme at the end. The annuity can be sold, OG, by the annuity owner. And it ensures that if you sell it back and receive the cash back you have invested, therefore, in case you need money, you can sell this annuity. So, in other words, you can sell your annuity. But the other thing that he talks about, if you become the broker, you can get the commission for selling it to yourself. Zing. Double whammy. <laughs> High five, baby. <laughs> it's, what do they say? Like a, a fool has himself or a person that has himself as an attorney is a fool for an attorney and a client, right? <laughs> we spent way too much time on that. But anyway, thanks to my evil arch, arch emesis, uh, Meg, for sending me that piece of dog do. Lesson number one, an annuity is not a simple to understand product. And if you don't know anything about finance and you're out there selling annuities, you're screwing over everybody you know and the people that you're selling it to. I guarantee it. And then number two, second lesson you should learn today is robo-advisors. Uh, oh, uh, there's a new one. There's a new one. That's our lesson for the day. And everybody already has it. First day of uh, hockey playoffs. OG, so, worried about breaking a hip as you're checking people into the boards? Yeah, I don't. I've never been on ice skates in my life. Gene Chatsky has a book brand new book about uh, breaking a hip or not breaking a hip. It's called Living Longer Without Running Out of Money or Breaking a Hip, uh, co-written with Dr. Michael Rosen, by the way. Jean, if you don't know who Jean is, she's written many, many best-selling books, including Make Money, Not Excuses, Pay It Down from Debt to Wealth on $10 a Day, uh, Not Your Parents Money Book, Making, Saving, and Spending Your Own Money, and of course, Money Rule. The first time Jean came on the show was she was talking about Money Rules, which was written back in uh, 2012. Gene has an amazing story that started at Forbes. She helped start up this little magazine called Smart Money in 1992, rising from a staff writer to a senior editor. And after five years there, she joined this other little publication, OG, called Money Magazine. Of course, she's appeared a ton on Oprah, live with Regis and Kelly, The View, written for Parents 17, Cosmopolitan. Is there anybody who doesn't know who Jean Chatsky is? She, of course, is the financial editor for NBC's Today Show. But right now, she's coming down to the basement to hang out with us. So excited, Jean Chatsky, coming down to talk about living longer without running out of money or breaking a hip. And 
coming down to the basement. Jean Chatsky joins us. Welcome back. Have a seat. How are you? I am great. I'm terrific. How are you? Well, I'm better now that you're here because you're going to help me age proof my life, huh? I am. I don't pretend to even play a doctor on TV, but I wrote this book with a fantastic doctor, Michael Roizen of the Cleveland Clinic, who specializes in aging and wellness. So we've got a lot of strategies so you don't run out of money or break a hip. I want to ask you about that in a second, but I have far more pressing stuff to ask yes, you sir. first. So I need a behind the scenes scoop, Jean. I watched you a couple of weeks ago on the Today Show talking with Matt Lauer and you were doing tax tips. And as always, of course, you were fantastic, but you've got this head. And I know this only from because I did this on a local level in Detroit where there's, you know, a fraction of the people watching that are watching the Today Show. So I know you've got this head full of very specific numbers and you can't say anything wrong. And I also know that you're thinking ahead, trying to seem interesting because it's taxes, right? And you've got this screen you're trying to operate. And I'm sitting there from a guy that's done, I did nine years of TV. I'm like, that's got to be the hardest thing ever to try to get that screen to go while I'm trying to remember the earned income credit at the same time. Was that the day that my graphics didn't work? The very last one didn't go. I think you pressed it and it didn't go right away. So you pressed it again and it flipped twice. Yeah, actually. So that's Al's weather monitor. And we've got fantastic graphics people who spend so much time making beautiful graphics that I get to play with. <laughs> I'm very honored, actually, because they don't let just anybody play with that monitor. Like you have to actually be able to keep the stuff in your head and press the buttons and uh, do it at the same time. It's a little Vanna White ish, right. right? Pressing all the buttons at the same time that you're talking. And I, I practice with it before I do it because I, I need to know which, because if you press that screen on a place where uh, it's not supposed to be pressed, it can go back to the first screen and then you're in big trouble. You did a great job though of covering it up at the end. Like, okay, well, we're just going to keep moving on. It was perfect. Yeah. That was, that was, you know, you got to keep talking. So I've been on the today show now for 22 years. I will never forget. I was doing a segment one morning with Brian Gumbel and he got a Charlie horse, like a, a, <laughs> bad one. And he said the, he got a Charlie horse during the break. And he said to me, if I get up in the middle of our segment, cause I'm in a lot of pain, you just keep talking. And I, I will never forget that. I mean, there have been a number of things that have gone wrong over the years. I had a segment a few months ago where the heel of my shoe got caught in the set and I couldn't move around. So, I, I mean, I just literally, I literally just took the shoe off and kept talking. And, and Savannah Gus, Guthrie, bless her, took her shoe off because she was feeling the sisterhood. You know, things happen. Graphics don't always work. You do your best and you keep going. I want to go back to Brian Gumbel just for a second. So he asks a question, then what does he do? Grab his leg? No. So during the break, he got this Charlie horse yeah, and I yeah. got into this, the chair during the break. Cause I was the next segment and he was in so much pain. He didn't know if he would be able to make it through. Well, but that's what I'm saying. Is he, is he like, you're answering the question. They have the no, camera he's, shot. He's faking it. He's like, he's got his poker face on and he's just going through it. And he, but he did think he might have to actually get up. I had a local guy in Detroit one time who would ask me a question and he was so disinterested when he knew that the camera was on me, he would pick his teeth. Oh, God, and, that's and I, disgusting. I know, and I'm trying to talk specifically, and I want to look right at him and seem that I'm engaged and interested, and it's so hard for me to keep up with my segment knowing the guy's just, just oh, it was, it was horrible. I'm like, thanks, yeah. pal. Thanks for just throwing me under the bus, but we made it through. I think people who have never been on the set of a live TV show – don't kind of understand how many different moving parts there are. I mean, the cameras themselves, they're like a ballet because they have to crisscross to get from one production area to another. It's incredibly intricate. The set's on a turntable, so it may be turning at the same time. You don't want to be in a shot that you're not supposed to be in. It's really amazing that it goes off every day so well. 
I was amazed that you pulled it through there because I could have never worked that screen. I could have never, ever done it. But people are wondering when we're going to actually talk money. And what I thought we'd do today, if you don't mind, is just talk a little bit about the first couple chapters of the book, which is your financial checkup. Because I, sure. think, I think if we get people through that today in the next 10 minutes, then they can pick up the book and they can work it from there. But this whole idea of age-proofing, let's start there, Gene. What does that actually mean, age-proofing? It means getting both your health and your finances moving in the right direction. We're all living so much longer than we ever thought we were going to live. If you don't have both of these things working in your favor, the last 20, 30, 40 years are not going to be as pleasant as they could be. And that's because if you have money, but you've got bad health, you're very quickly going to spend through your money trying to take care of your health. And if you've got health, but you don't have a lot of financial resources, it's really hard to stay healthy. Boy, and in the book, you go through some amazing statistics. You say in the past three decades, men have gone from living to age 70. I mean, I remember my grandfather maybe died at 61, 70 to 79, women 77 to 83. And you say that Time Magazine speculates that the first person to live to 160 is probably already born. Holy cow. I'm sure that's me, by the way. I'm sure that's me. Yeah, I hope it's you. I, I hope, hope it's, it's not, not me. me. <laughs> I was going to say, I hope it's not me. I don't want to be that person. But we're not prepared at all financially. Let's just talk financially because that's what you and I do. Longevity-wise, we're not prepared for that at all. We're not. We're not prepared for a retirement that lasts 30 years, let alone 40 or 50 years. That's because we're not saving enough on a regular basis. We're not focused on growing our assets to take care of ourselves because this whole idea that we're the ones who have to take care of ourselves in both health and in terms of retirement, it's still a relatively new concept, right? 401ks have only been around for about a quarter of a century. Before that, everybody had pensions. Everybody had a lot more confidence in Social Security and Medicare than they do these days. And so the bottom line is you've got to do this for yourself. It's on you. That's why we start with an assessment. We start by looking both financially and health wise at where you are right now. So you can figure out where you particularly have to improve your own personal economy. I want to ask you uh, just a couple questions from the health segment, which isn't your area, because there's two tools that the two of you mentioned. The first one is the real age score. Yeah. So Dr. Royzen, my co-author, is known for the real age test. Essentially, it's a series of questions you answer. You can find it online. It's free. You answer these questions and it tells you how old you are based on your body and your numbers. And hopefully you're a lot younger than you are at your actual physical age. And why does he want us to start with that? Because it's a good metric of what you need to do to improve. It'll it'll point out whether your problems are in weight or in blood pressure or in toxins or many different other things along the way. And then the other thing is this uh, ShareCare app. That looked really cool. So the ShareCare app is really cool. Again, it's free, sharecare.com. And you can download this app and we're incorporating financial wellness into it as we speak. So it'll help you figure out whether you're on the right track. The neatest thing that this app does is measure your stress based on your voice. It uses voice recognition to assess the quality of your voice and tell you whether you're stressed out or not. And the more time that you spend in this stressed out state, the worse it is for your health and your finances. It's so amazing. I mean, stuff like that just blows me away. I'm sure I would get on the ShareCare app and I'd be like Spinal Tap Gene where it's, you know, one to 10 and my stress goes up to 11. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but it's you know an that. issue because stress is stress is the biggest ager. You know, it affects our brain, it affects our body, it affects our overall health, and the biggest cause of stress is finances. Well, that's why I like some of the rules that you lay down, which are number one: even though fear can be a great short-term motivator, you can't live in a world of fear your entire life. And I, I guess that has a lot to do with the stress piece. Yeah, it does. And and here's the deal with financial stress and health stresses. There are a lot of stresses that we can deep breathe away. We can deep breathe it away when we're in a traffic jam and the guy in front of us is not moving and we're going to lay on the horn and we are stressed. But if we get ourselves to take a couple of deep breaths, we can make that go away. You cannot deep breathe away your credit card debt. 
Right. You can't deep breathe away the fact that you haven't saved for retirement. You've got to actually do something, get yourself on a plan to deal with those stresses. And what's interesting is you don't have to completely solve the problem in order to see a reduction in your stress. You do have to make some progress. Just having a plan, I think, yeah. is, so that you can sleep at night, which was number two on that list that I liked. Also, you can't, fear was number one. Number two was stop comparing yourself to other people. Other people are irrelevant. They are. They are totally irrelevant when it comes to both your happiness and your financial and physical health. You got to compare yourself to you. And, it, it, you know, we are a society that is wired to compare, right? Social media doesn't help us. The Kardashians certainly don't help us. We're, we're wired to like measure up to other people. Just stop. Try to compare in a way that makes you feel a little bit better about you. I had the Kardashians on TV last week. I, I have no idea why. And Cheryl, my spouse, walks by and she's like, what are you doing? Like, what? Yeah. Why? Why? Why would you watch this? I have, I have no that idea. That is 45 minutes of your life that you cannot get back. <laughs> but my stress went down because I was... I was getting a little worried about Chloe. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> and now you feel better. I feel. I feel fantastic <laughs> about my life. Right. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the financial stuff that you need to test yourself on to start and to analyze. You start off with your income, and that's an area, by the way, where people are always comparing themselves to everybody else. But we start with gross income, and where do we go from there? So I like to start with what do you earn, what do you own, and what do you owe. You know, three points in the sand, right? This is basically a snapshot. What do I earn? What do I own? What do I owe? My income, my assets, my liabilities. And what you want to see as you look at those is that the trajectory is headed in the right direction. So your earnings over the years should be headed up. There may be times, I mean, I took a, a pay cut at several times in my career to enable me to get on the track that I wanted to get on. That's okay as long as you've got a plan for doing it. But your assets, your retirement savings, your college savings, your emergency savings, they should all be heading up pretty steadily. And as you close in on retirement, your debt, particularly your mortgage debt, should be heading down. So I'm not just looking at the amount of money I'm bringing in. I'm looking at the difference between what I'm bringing in and what's going out and how it's going out. Yeah, exactly. And if you have a gap there where you can steadily put aside 15% of what you're bringing in. I mean, that's the, that's the big linchpin to this whole equation. It's, it's saving and it's saving habitually. It's saving consistently. Of course, we want you to put those savings to work, but before you can even do that, you have to make sure that you're doing it. And a lot of people are not. Are there red flags in the debt area when I'm examining that, that I should really be on the alert for? Uh-huh. A number of them. If your credit card debt is getting bigger, Every single month, if you are moving debt from card to card to card in an attempt to consistently transfer balances that you're having trouble getting rid of, if your credit score is low. Now, your credit score is not the most important number in this equation, but it is a measurement of how responsible you are. So, you know, all of those things and and not being able to sleep at night. If you're cre it's a little like alcohol. If you think that you're drinking too much, you're probably drinking too much. If you think that you've got too much credit card debt, you probably got too much credit card debt. When you take a look at the different numbers that are important, you said credit score is not the most important which one of those numbers is the most important? Is it net worth statement? Is it your balance sheet? Uh, what's the, what do you think is number one? I would say your savings rate is probably number one, but there are others that are important as well. I like the metrics that chart your course along the way to retirement that by age 30, you should have about one times your income put away for retirement by 43 times, by 56 times, by 68 times, and by the time you retire 10 times, your current income, whatever it is then. And if you have a traditional pension, you can reduce those numbers by a little bit. I also think the amount of debt you're carrying, your debt ratios as compared to your income are important numbers to look at. So for example, you should not have any more than 36% of your income represented by payments on your debts at any point in time. It's funny when I was a financial planner, people wouldn't want to go through this part. Right. And, and I want to talk to you about it today specifically, Gene, because 
like uh, you I don't know if you say or or Dr. Roizen says in the book, diagnostics work. Like getting these numbers in front of you really, really works. And it makes the fun parts way more fun. Well, because it's motivating, right? We talk a lot in the book about the fact that there are two different types of motivation. There's intrinsic motivation and there's extrinsic motivation. The extrinsic motivation is motivation from outside sources. So you want to get into a particular outfit because you're going to your high school reunion and you want to look the same as you looked when you got out of high school. That's extrinsic motivation. That's an outside force at work. But you start to see those pounds coming off the scale and you start to feel good about that. And that motivates you to keep going. That's intrinsic. And that's a lot longer lasting. So with your money, you know, the fact that you can start saving a little bit more, you go and you visit those savings accounts, you see that the money is adding up and up and up. That inspires you to think, hey, I'm actually pretty good with my money. I can do more. I can save more. I can meet my financial goals. That's so awesome. The book is age proof. And we did maybe one quarter of the first two chapters. Tell us where the book goes from there. Once we've got our diagnostic done. Yeah. So we found eight different areas where the same strategies work to improve both your health and your financial situation. So assessing is just one of those strategies, but we've got seven more and they're helping a lot of people. Yeah, that's cool. And it's also got to be cool because I was here, you know, in the big town of Texarkana, we have one bookstore and I'm at the bookstore last week. And I see the book there. It's got to be, this is, you know, nowhere near your first book, Gene, but it's still got to be cool when you go to the bookstore and you see it sitting there. It's got to be neat. It's really cool. And this one is a New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestseller. So we're so excited about that. Well, that's the second most important thing. The most important, of course, is that you got to talk about it on the Stacking Benjamin Show, right? That is. Yes. And I'm going to make sure they print new covers and say, as seen on Stacking Benjamin. <laughs> that's exactly it. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Thank you. Hey, trivia fans, I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a big day in the basement because it's day one of the NHL hockey playoffs. Mom's making that crazy cream cheese pizza dip. Joe's talking about checking people into the boards. OG's already on his third Labatt, and the show's only half over. So to do my part, I thought you deserve some good old-fashioned hockey trivia. Here's the question. Which player's jersey sold most quickly during the 2015-16 season? I'll be back with the answer and maybe another cold one for OG in just a moment. Hey, stackers, know what I love? I love saving money on things that aren't important. I'm not one of these people that wants to live in a cabin in the woods. Don't get me wrong. That's your goal. That's fine. But that's not something that I'm looking for. I'm looking to spend money on experiences that are fun and not spend money on stuff that I don't care about. You know one thing I don't care about? I'm not attached to my bank. So why do people stick with the same bank forever when banking has completely changed? Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash magnify money and you'll find out how much. You'll find out how badly your checking accounts performed. You'll find out how horrible that savings account you have is. You also find out that the debt products you're using are a big fat waste of time. So if you're going to consolidate your loans, why not do it the best way possible? If you're going to bank with anybody, why not make them the best possible? Stackingbenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. And if you're looking at those student loans and you're thinking, you know what, the interest rate is way too high on those. We've got a resource for you, stackingbenjamins.com forward slash SoFi. That's spelled S-O-F-I. SoFi is the leader in marketplace lending, and it's always interesting how a company starts. And SoFi is no exception. Dan Macklin tells us the story. Well, SoFi began at Stanford University uh, about five years ago now. And really it started because there were a few of us, and we were amazed at how much student debt was out there. And we were equally amazed at how expensive it was. We had classmates who were paying 7% and 8% for their loans. And we just thought there has to be a better way. And we looked into it and there wasn't a better way. No one was doing anything. It was just completely 100% government dominated and no options for people. So we started so that we could offer people better student loans. I think it's a great lesson for any entrepreneur, don't you? 
Nobody's filling the hole that you want filled. Fill it yourself. And SoFi has done that. StackingBenjamins.com forward slash SOFI. And if you use our link, they'll give you $100 when you refinance your student loans or take out a personal loan to refinance your credit card debt. How about that? An extra $100 just because you're smart enough to listen to us. Welcome back to the second period of the show, everyone. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Before the break, I asked the question, which player's jersey sold most quickly during the 2015-2016 season? The answer, if you said Len Penzo of the California Gold Diggers, you'd be wrong. It was actually Jonathan Tooze of the Chicago Blackhawks. While the NHL didn't release the specific sales for the jersey, we can be sure it's upwards of at least 150 bucks or so. His mom must have bought one, right? Time to hand this show back to two guys who haven't managed to make a good point yet, or even an assist. See ya. Vetchkin's good, but there's a lot of Blackhawks fans out there. Yeah, they did pretty well, I guess, a couple years ago, huh? Yeah, they're okay. Chicago Blackhawks, they're okay. You know who's really bad all of a sudden? The Red Wings. <laughs> I know. That's so bad. bad. You are just, you're rubbing it in, aren't you? Oh, I'm not rubbing it in. I just, you know. Yeah. Not, it's an observation. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for making that observation about my favorite team. Hey, let's uh, let's get the heck out of that conversation and throw out the Haven Lifeline to tackle some of life's or rather life insurance's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life Insurance Agency, they've been spearheading innovation within the life insurance industry by focusing on those two things that you value most, your family and your time. That's why they've created a high quality and most importantly, affordable term life insurance policy you can purchase entirely online. No need to wait several weeks for a decision when you can get one right now with Haven Life. Uh, they didn't write that part. I, I threw that in for emphasis. You made, made it up. Okay. Yeah. Head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life. I'm sure Brittany at Haven Life's going to be like, yeah, never do that again. Ixnay on the off script day. Head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life now to get a free quote and learn about life insurance the modern way. So the traditional no exam life insurance is at least two times more expensive generally than policies that require an exam. They usually have a cap of about 250000 bucks. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. but Guaranteed uh, issue. Not- and usually it means, uh, <clears throat> yeah, don't look under this uh, rock. <laughs> under- I'll take whatever you'll give me. Don't look uh, it's going to be $1,000 my- a month. Deal. Don't look under my right arm. You that- drive a tough bargain, but okay. <laughs> right. That rash means nothing. Just can I get the guaranteed issue? I'll, I'll take as much as you can give me. I mean, uh, what do you think I'd qualify for? <laughs> right. hmm. <laughs> Let me think about a sec. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like like Kramer on that. Uh, remember that old episode of Seinfeld? We're prepared. The one with Kramer in it? We're prepared no, to give so you. so far not. <laughs> he brings his lawyer. Oh, just, that's right. We're prepared just, to give you a lifetime of coffee. He's like, I'll take it. They're going to give him a lifetime of coffee and a million dollars. And a million dollars. And at the end of a lifetime of coffee and I'll take it. Yeah. And then he's wired the rest of the show. All right. People wonder what the heck we're doing. I'm wondering what the heck we're doing. You know what we're doing? We're all fired up because we're talking to our brand spanking new friend, Kyle. Say hello, Kyle. Hi, guys. This is Kyle from Cincinnati. I have a question about whether I should move some of my investments from a normal taxable account into the Roth IRA I just opened. I have about $10,000 in three index funds in my taxable account, and I think my least tax-efficient fund is a small-cap index fund. I have about $2,500 invested in that, and it's gained uh, about $250. My question is, should I sell that now take the tax hit on the $250 gain and buy the same fund in my Roth IRA and have all the future capital gains and dividend distributions sheltered from taxes? Or should I leave it as it is, not take the tax hit now, but have all those future distributions subject to tax? I'm relatively young, so either way, the investments, I plan on having them stay there for a long time. So essentially, is that tax hit now worth having all the future distributions 
sheltered from tax. Thanks. Thanks for the question, Kyle. Uh, does he do it? Should he do it? Well, assuming that you can earmark the money for retirement, sure. Fund your Roth IRA all the way up. If you've got cash reserve outside of it and you are using this money for long-term money anyway, might as well have it be tax-free. And, you know, the tax hit. Uh, Minimal. What, are you going to pay 40 bucks extra in taxes next year? If that. Minimal. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I'd worry too much about that. I'm going to push back, though, on Kyle. He can either move that or he can find a way to fund it out of cash flow. And if I'm his financial advisor, I'm helping to push him to find ways to try to leave that alone and make a new contribution out of cash flow instead. That's that's the push. How about that? Well, I mean, I think it's six of one, right? If he was saying, I can save the 5000 a year, the 5500 a year to max out my Roth starting today, but I also have enough money to put some extra money into it. That's what I was thinking. I would put it in and put it in for last year. You know, you still got a couple days before tax filing season is over. So if you can code it for last year, gotcha. You know, 2016. Do both. Yeah, fantastic. Save 10,000 and double up. Put 5,000 yep. in your Roth and 5,000 in your brokerage account. Here's the deal, Kyle. If you need just the principal, the cool thing about the Roth IRA is you can take the principal without penalty. The bad news is, is that from now on, any gains that that thing has, that's going to be subject to limitations, right? All the different Roth IRA limitations we don't need to get into. You can Google that. But there's limitations on the gains. So if you think, well, I might need the principal, but I don't need the gains, then that's great. If you think you're going to need the principal and the gains before you know the time that you can get at the Roth IRA, before those golden handcuffs come off, then I'd say don't do it. But generally, yes, absolutely. Go do it. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Kyle, for the question. If you would like us to throw out the lifeline to you, head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash voicemail. And for more on Haven Life, stackybenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life uh, Life Insurance. Doug also brings down the mail. Reminds me of a dumb joke I heard a long time ago. Uh, and I can't stand a joke when you can't remember the joke. You just remember the, the punchline. It's about these two hunters, and they go into the woods. I remember that. And there's bears, and the bears eat the hunters. And then later on, they're like, there's something going on I don't remember. And somebody, the punchline is, the check's in the male and the pole's in the female. But I don't remember. I don't remember. But I think that's all you need, isn't it? Isn't that all you need? Well, that's obvious. The two hunters are out there. And, you know, one of them's Czechoslovakian from the Czech Republic, and one's from Poland. Yeah. A yeah. Polish hunter and a, and a Czechoslovakian hunter are out to. Yeah, but it money. still has something to do with a poll and a and a you know a check that you're mailing. And I don't remember that, but anyway, uh, bad stuff. Sorry, sorry to even bring that up. I just I, I told my kids a joke the other day that I thought was really good. What's that? Maybe I'll talk about it later. All right. Uh, our letter today, Doug just brought down the mail and uh, brought this uh, great note from our friend Kara. Kara says. Hello, team. After listening to the podcast about tax planning, I was wondering if any of the wonderful Stacking Benjamins crew might have a suggestion or two for a good, not boring, question marks, tax planning book to read. Is there such a thing? My husband and I are going to be just barely jumping into a higher tax bracket this year, and I'm trying to figure out a strategy of how to lower our tax bill, i.e., is there a way for us to bump down to the lower tax bracket if we're only a couple thousand above the new level? Greatly appreciate all you do. I know, strange. She said, <laughs> thanks for the compliment, I think, Kara. Uh, but OG, great tax resources. No, none of them are not boring. I have the Ernst & Young tax guide. It's about 1,000 pages. That's pretty pretty boring. But that's more about doing taxes than it is tax strategy. The biggest thing that I think most people fail to appreciate is when it comes to getting into a new tax bracket, like Kara says there just a few minutes ago, that doesn't penalize all of your money. You know, so it's just that last dollar that's taxed at that higher rate. So just because you happen to be in the higher bracket doesn't subject all of your income to that new rate. It's just the last dollar or the money above that last bracket. But that being said, a couple thousand dollars over, the easiest thing to do is to defer that money in a pre-tax plan. So you've got three different places, your 401k or 403b employer sponsored plan if you're working, your spouse's 403b, 401k employer sponsored plan if they're working, 
if one of you aren't working, you can do traditional IRAs, which is you know, up to another 5,500. And then you've also got a HSA if you have a high deductible plan. So if you've not maxed out all of those three things, then that's the first place to go. And my guess is that'll get you enough under the limit. Our business partner, Kathleen, and I created a course, actually, because the best thing that happened to me and the best way for me to find uh, tax help was a great mentor of mine sat down with me. And actually, we read the front and the back of a 1040, line by line. And I thought it was going to be the world's most boring thing. It was actually pretty damn fascinating. And then we looked at the itemized deductions page. And once you know where deductions fit, exemptions go, where credits are, it actually was amazingly simple, and now I kind of know where opportunities are. So I've never read a book that was exciting, but we did create a very inexpensive course uh, that you can take that takes not a lot of time. I basically do for you what this mentor did for me, and it's stackybenjamins.com forward slash taxes, and uh, you can do those videos, and we try to keep it humorous and fun and not boring at all. And uh, Kara had no idea that she was setting up me, me talking about. I that. didn't have any idea you were. I was setting you up either. But no, how about that? Uh, you, you know, there there was a book a long time ago, and I can't find it. I've, I've been searching on Amazon for this. It was a book by Andrew Tobias. Remember Andrew Tobias, big big uh, financial guru. Andrew Tobias, maybe fifteen years ago, could be a big guru today. Just haven't seen Andrew around lately. But Andrew Tobias had a book on taxes, and I can't. Uh, I can't seem to see it anywhere, but um, that's the closest I've gotten. But anyway, uh, great note from Kara. Thanks for the note. If you've got a note for us, send that to me, Joe at stackofbenjamins.com, or another place to go for both the Haven Lifeline and to ask questions is the show questions tab right at the top of our website at stackofbenjamins.com. I'll tell you, we are running very close on uh, Haven Lifeline questions, so you can have your question answered fairly quickly by having us throw out the lifeline to you. We're probably about six weeks behind when it comes to letters. Also, if you are looking for a phenomenal financial advisor... uh, You shouldn't laugh after you say that. I I totally shouldn't. (laughs) I'm I'm trying to make it as flowery as I possibly can. If if thou beats knowest a... uh, humble advisor in your corner, the OSGS is available uh, because he's taking on clients. So make the call by heading to this URL, stackybenjamins.com forward slash O-G, the letter O, the letter G, and he may get to know us your financial plan. I, I'm half oh doing it. I can't do it. It's, it's uh, yeah, this show's off the rails. Thanks a ton, Gene Chatsky, for coming down to the basement, trying to save us. And uh, thanks to you, OG, for another great Buddy. episode. Good another stuff. one. Yes, sir. Thanks to Wells Fargo for bringing out another <laughs> robo-advisor. <laughs> and and uh, we'll see everybody back here, except OG, on Friday for another crazy roundtable discussion. That's going to do it. Doug, take it from here, man. What did we learn today? I always take it from here, Joe. Hey, so folks, what did we learn today? First, hoping to age-proof your life? Take Gene Chatsky's advice. A little planning can go a long, long way. Second, the health savings account? While it's great for health care, it's also a great tax shelter for anything you need down the road. But the big lesson? Thinking about a facial makeover? Maybe start with the NHL before expensive surgery. You'll save a bundle of money on your nose job, which, when I think about it, you might need for a new set of teeth. Special thanks to Jean Chatsky. You can find her book at jeanchatsky.com, or we'll have a link on our show notes at stackingbenjamins.com. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC. The show is created by Joe Saul Cihai, produced by Richie Rutter Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. 
Special thanks to Joe's mom for telling me to stop oogling Mrs. Butterworth. She's right. I'm moving on to that looker, Aunt Jemima. That girl is fine. I wonder what her phone number is. Girl, I'm going to hit you up. Ship me your digits. You know, we talk about TV shows and movies all the time. Mm -hmm. I was watching the show the other day on Netflix, and it was about this guy. He's taking these pieces of sheet metal, and he's putting them together. Dude, it was riveting. I'm not even going to oh, come acknowledge. On. Come on. All right, are which, we sets up, this? which sets up our good, uh, yes. our good game show. We should announce this. Yes, this is, this is perfect. How about this one? So there's a bear and a rabbit. And they're uh, sitting out in the woods. They're at the like woods outhouse, basically, right? D don't, don't, don't. So the uh, so the bears taking a crap. Why are you tell this a horrible joke? I can't even believe that you're laughing already, and I haven't even told you. I know. I win. It does. Do you, do you know this joke? Yes, I'm in trouble either way. If I say it does or it doesn't, I'm in trouble. So the bear looks down at the rabbit and says, uh, "Mr. Rabbit." Could I ask you a personal question? And the rabbit looks up at him and he says, well, sure, Mr. Bear. And he says, uh, does sh stick to your fur? And the rabbit kind of smiles and says, no, nah, Mr. Bear, it doesn't. So Bear said, good. Reaches down and grabs him and uses him to clean him up. <laughs> it just, it's just so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> so I win. So this is a great example. Uh, so, so you want to, you want to do this, okay, uh, how about this you know, one? Little, little contest? Okay. Give me another one. This guy goes to this zoo. It's a horrible zoo. There's only one animal, a dog. It's a shit zoo. Sorry, dude. Ah, come on. All right. Nope. All right. Uh, tell everybody what we're going to do. So we heard this on the radio a really long time ago, right? A radio program, the, uh, kind of make me laugh. I know you were telling me about it. I've heard it in different, different markets. I heard it uh, on uh, WMVP Chicago. It was a show called Johnny in the Morning. Okay, there you go. So here's what we're going to do. If you've got a joke, you can send it to me, and I will read it to Joe. And if your joke makes Joe laugh, then uh, we'll give you something, I don't know, a book or a T-shirt or something. And likewise, if you want to try me out, you send it to Joe. So Joe's email, everybody knows, Joe at Stacking Benjamins. Mine's very simple, OG at StackingBenjamins.com. And so if you send me the joke, just put in the subject line joke so right. that I can right. sort them. Yes, please. Uh, subject line joke and then put your joke in the text. Um, and we'll we'll go through a couple of them. You know, we'll let them accumulate and go through a couple of more, a couple of weeks. You know, send some to me, send some to Joe. They gotta, you know, don't send the same joke to each one of us. They got to be better than yours. They got to be better. Than well, yours. way better than yours for sure. How about this one? There's uh, three guys sitting out in the, out in the woods. A lot of woods jokes. I don't know why. Apparently. <laughs> but, uh, three guys out, out uh, deer hunting. Get up early in the morning, you know, at deer camp. Uh, and uh, um, I can't tell this joke. Forget it. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, I've got one that would just slay you, and I can't tell it. I won't be able to tell it on the show. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Uh, I've got a bunch that I, I feel bad about laughing about. Does that count? Bring them on. Come down to the basement with us. Uh, yep. everybody. So OG is stackingbenjamins.com. Yes. Joe is stackingbenjamins.com. Don't send the same one to both of us. Um, and just in the subject line, be sure you write capital letters, joke, and then we can sort them and then we'll, uh, we'll go through them. Also on that note, if you want to, uh, if, if you want to hang out a couple things coming up in May and I'll have this date, uh, next week, but the second week of May, we're setting up a meetup. I will be at a conference in Times Square. And while I'm there one night, I'd love to just hang out with our Stacky Benjamins peeps. So if you're in the in yet the, another trip I wasn't invited to. If you're in the if you're in the New York area and uh, want to hang out near Times Square somewhere, we'll we'll find a place and we'll get that done. So email me there. Uh, email Go me. see Aladdin. 
Joe at StackAdventures.com. No, we won't do that. We'll probably just go. Have you seen Aladdin? Grab a beer somewhere. Um, I have. I actually have. You did see Aladdin? Yes. And then. uh, Not the movie. No, I saw the play. Where did I see the play? It's only in New York, so I don't think it's been, I don't think it's touring. It did tour. I don't think so. I'm 99% sure. It's one percent sure that it didn't. So maybe all right. And then, and then, the, and then the second, the second thing is, I will be in Anaheim at a conference in. What the frick is going on? July. This is not past the board of directors yet. In August, in August, that's the podcast movement conference. I go every year. So that doesn't make it right. And I'll actually be, I'll be helping put on that conference. There's I'm a piece of it that I'll be doing up to one of these things eventually. And then of course. I, uh, if you come through Texarkana, we've had listeners come through Texarkana. Just text me. I've had lunch. Yeah, because you have your phone number out on the internet. <laughs> That's true. I should... Just give me a text. I'd love to buy you dinner yeah. here in Texarkana. <laughs> Don't text Lone Star. I'll show you my favorite my favorite hostess. <laughs> we can have dinner with Chloe. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> I think they'll be like a. She always has the day off every time you yeah, come in and ask for her section. It is so strange. <laughs> She's like, like, hey, so yeah. how about another 12 ouncer? <laughs> At New York Strip looks delicious, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and she's like, I, I don't feel well. I need to go home. I got to get away from you, creepy old guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, but anyway, I'll be in Anaheim at the end of August. So, and then I'll be also in uh, Northern Michigan in early July uh, near Traverse City. So if... uh, Were you trying to show me exactly where it was on the map by sticking out your middle, your (laughs) pinky? I showed you right on the map. You stuck my hand out. Look, I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be right there. Yeah. Right at the the bottom knuckle of the pinky. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Let's get out of here. See ya.